this is the Soyuz XS12, a new mini smartphone review because you guys seem to love these reviews of mini smartphones as they're the most popular reviews on my channel. So here is the XS12. So this phone comes with 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, although there's a 62 gig version as well, I think, but it is currently out of stock on Banggood at least. According to the website, it also has Android 9, 2100 million power battery. Okay, according to this one website, it has the MediaTek 6737, which is a pretty old and weak chip, um, but hopefully it won't be too bad. All right, let's unbox this thing. This is how, it, how it's sealed with, with, with just regular tape. Okay, bit chunky there. Whole thing's made of plastic, which is I mean, perfectly understandable. Overall, a pretty good looking phone, if I say so myself. It also have a power adapter, but it's the, it's, it's the Chinese plug, aka US, like, they both look the same, but they, they did give me this adapter. That doesn't seem to fit. Ah, there, there you go. And in this little box, we have, oh, we have a Type-C cable this time, a TPU case, and that is a screen protector, which is weird because it also came with this box. What do we have in this box? Huh? This looks like for an iPhone 11. Why did they get? Why did they give me a case for an iPhone 11? We'll ignore the fact we just got a case for an iPhone 11. Uh, let's boot this up. And of course, it comes pre-set up. Kind of sus, but I won't uh, dwell too much about it. Uh, all right. Wait, this is the home piece. Not what? What? Yeah, this looks like an app drawer, but it's instead it's just, that's just the home screen. Um, so our first impression display is pretty decent. All right, we have the Play Store at least. Uh, so I'm gonna set this up a bit, uh, figure some stuff out and get back to you. All right, so I'm trying to download a few apps here, but it's an absolute nightmare because I've tested mini phones in the past and they had pretty good touch inputs, which made typing not a complete nightmare, but the touch input here is really trash because look, I'm gonna give you an example, look. I clearly pressed on K, and it goes right to L. It keeps drifting, look. K, nope, that's, that's it. Okay, now, okay, now, it's, that's good. Nope, that's an R, okay. I don't want to press back, it presses search. Oh, thank God, it pops up here, okay, all right. But overall, like, I'm pretty impressed with the, with the speed of the, of the phone. Like, there's no stutter at all so far, or lag, or anything like that. All right, no fingerprint unlock, but we do have a face unlock. That's how this works. No, I don't like secure startup. I would have to hold the phone really, f like, like, all, like, extend my arm all the way just, just so it would register my face. So, yeah, I do not have much hopes for this. Let's see, though. Yeah, matching air. Oh, there you go. All right. Now let's see if I hold it with my arm extended. Okay, this time error. Let me try and show you guys. Yeah, it, it like barely works. All right, Nephew does a no-go. What about Wind Rider? Touching it, okay, there you go. It's like 0 0.1 frames per second. Yeah, I can I can I can barely move. Alright. Gaming on this phone is just a big nope. Come on. I I tapped royalty free music search and it crashed. I forgot to record, but I tried using the voice activation, but it just crashed again. Why? 
Oh, and it just simply let me search for music. Oh my God, finally. Why is it showing me all of these videos? Just give me the typical royalty free music that I usually test. Yes, here you go. Why do I have to scroll so down for that? And YouTube crashed again, but I was about to end it anyway. So yeah, the speaker is actually pretty good. Like it gets pretty loud. I mean, it's a bit tinny, but what can you expect for, I mean, this price range and the size of the phone overall, you know? All right, according to Geekbench, it is Android 9, but I mean, it can, okay, I guess it is Android 9. I mean, it's very possible. The software can still fool these apps into thinking that it's Android 9 when it's really not, but this. But I think it's Android 9, like it, it seems legit. It's just that usually these phones would have like Android 4 or Android 5, but this, I mean, I don't know, this, the menu looks like Android 9, don't you think? Also the settings, I know how, how it looks like when they're tricking you, but so yeah. Uh, we have the MediaTek 6739, not, not the 37. So that's good to know, because the 39 is a little bit better. All right, anyway, let's run this uh, benchmark, I guess. It's gonna take a while, so I'm gonna stop recording and get back to you. That's a 119 single score with 382 multi score. So I'm not up to date with what is considered good. So you guys be the judge of that. All right, we don't have our specs anywhere, so we're just gonna take our pictures and and see how they turn out. Now let's go outside. And this is rear facing video. And my end focus looks nice. Yeah. And front facing video. <clears throat> Let me know what you think. So yeah, that is pretty much it. So should you buy this phone? Well, I think for everything uh, things for around 90 bucks, I think. Uh, it's pretty good for that price. Like daily, daily tasks such as, you know, Play Store, system apps mostly. The, you, you saw how YouTube crashed multiple times. But the phone is usable, I'll tell you that. Just the keyboard is a bit finicky compared to other mini phones. And the battery life seems to hold up fine considering the, the phone size and the amount we have. Just don't do anything too intensive on this phone, like trying to play games or using Geekbench because it slows down the entire phone and it just does not like to do anything uh, CPU intensive. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.